Welcome to Math with Mr. J. In this video, I'm going to cover what perimeter, area, and volume are. We will start with perimeter, move to area, and then end with volume. Let's jump into perimeter. Now, perimeter is the distance around the outside of a shape. We will use a rectangle for our example of perimeter. So the perimeter is the distance around the outside of this rectangle. We can find the perimeter by adding the lengths of all of the sides. We have two feet, six feet, two feet, and six feet. So perimeter equals two feet plus six feet plus two feet plus six feet. Now I do want to mention it does not matter what order you add the side lengths in. You get the correct perimeter however you do it. For example, if we do six plus six plus two plus two, that will give us the same thing and the correct perimeter. So now let's add. We have two plus six, that's eight, plus two is 10, plus six is 16. So the perimeter is 16 feet. So the perimeter of this rectangle, the distance around the outside is 16 feet. And that's it for perimeter. Just remember, perimeter is the distance around the outside of a shape, a figure. And we can find the perimeter by adding the lengths of all of the sides. Let's move on to area. Now area is the amount of surface a shape covers. And we are talking two-dimensional or 2D for area. So the flat surface covered. This is important to keep in mind because once we move on to volume, we will be talking three-dimensional or 3D. So again, for area, the amount of surface a shape covers. We measure area in square units. So for our example, we have a rectangle and we are working with feet for our unit of measure. So what we need to do, we need to see how many square feet this rectangle covers. This is a square foot right here. So it is one foot by one foot. So again, we're going to see how many square feet that this rectangle covers. Let's see what this looks like. Let's start with this six feet right here. So the length of six feet, we have six feet going across. Let's draw out the six feet. So one, two, three, four, five, and six. Now for our width, which is going the other way, we have two feet. So let's draw out the two feet. So one, two feet going that way. Now we have the square feet that this rectangle covers. So how many square feet does it cover? Well, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. So the area of this rectangle is 12 square feet. Now for area, we put that two there. We have our unit of measure feet to the power of two to represent square feet. The exponent only applies to the unit of measure, by the way, not the number. So don't get confused by that. Again, that just represents square feet or whatever your unit of measure is. Now for this example, we drew out all of the square feet to show what area looks like and how it is measured. For a rectangle, we can just use the formula area equals length times width. So area equals length times width. And I used a cursive L so it doesn't look like a one. Now we can plug in the length and the width. So area equals, and we're going to use six feet for the length times two feet for the width. Now I used the longer side, six feet for the length, but if you were to switch those, you'll still get the correct area. 
Now we can multiply. So 6 times 2 gives us an area of 12 square feet. So you can see that we get 12 square feet that way as well. And remember, we use that 2 for area to show that we measure area in square units. And for this example, it was square feet. This rectangle covers 12 square feet. And that's it for area. Just remember, area is the amount of surface something covers. Now something to keep in mind, we find area of different shapes and figures different ways. There are different formulas. We used length times width because we had a rectangle for our example. Let's move on to volume. Now volume is the amount of space occupied by a three-dimensional, a 3D shape. So we are moving from area, which is two-dimensional or flat, and we are moving to volume, which is three-dimensional, 3D. So instead of square units like we used for area, we measure volume in cubic units. For our example, we have a rectangular prism and we are working with feet again for our unit of measure. What we need to do, we need to see how many cubic feet this rectangular prism occupies or takes up. A cubic foot is a one foot by one foot by one foot cube. Let's see what this looks like. We have six feet for our length. So let's draw out six feet here. So one, two, three, four, five, and six. The six feet go across the top as well. And then we have two feet for the width. So let's draw two feet here. And then this goes across the top as well. And then we have a height of three feet. So one, two, and three. Now we have the amount of cubic feet that this rectangular prism occupies. Now since this is 3D, we can't see all of the cubes. Not all of them are visible. But we can still figure out how many cubes there are. In order to do this, let's take a look at the bottom layer. We have six cubes going across and two cubes going back. So six by two. That gives us 12 cubes on the bottom layer. And then we have three layers. One, two, three. So we have 12 cubes on this layer, 12 cubes on this layer, and 12 cubes on this layer. So 12, 12, and 12, or 12 times three. That gives us 36 cubic feet. So the volume equals 36 cubic feet. Now for volume, we use that three, so our unit of measure, feet is to the power of three to represent cubic feet. We measure volume in cubic units. Now we drew out all of those cubes to show how we measure volume. For a rectangular prism, we can just use volume equals length times width times height. And we can plug in the length, width, and height. So the length, we are going to use six feet times the width of two feet times the height of three feet. And then we can multiply. Six times two is 12 times three is 36. So the volume equals 36 cubic feet. So we get 36 cubic feet that way as well. And remember, use that three for volume to show cubic units. And in this case, it was cubic feet. And that's it for volume. Just remember, volume is the amount of space a 3D shape or figure occupies. Now something to keep in mind, there are different ways, different formulas, depending on what you're working with as far as volume. We worked with a rectangular prism, for this example. 
So there you have it. There's what perimeter is, what area is, and what volume is. I hope that helped. Thanks so much for watching. Until next time, peace.